Our next talk today is by Sonia Bui, and Sonia is the head of the library's documentary software at Jean Moulin Leon III University and has been since 2011. She's been working for 19 years as a system librarian in several academic libraries and before that for an ILS provider. Sonia is the chairperson of the French association Koha La, which aims to promote the Koha ILS and the open source tools, um, other open source tools that they can also use. And she's been doing that for Koha La since 2015. Now, Sonia's talk today is dealing with personal data in Koha from legal requirements to statistics necessity, the GDPR, welcome on board. So we'll look forward to hearing about all of that from Sonia now. Hello everybody, uh, I'm sorry not to be uh, able to be here today, but uh, with the pandemic, uh, we don't have the, the choice, it is what it is. Uh, I want to say that it's the first time I'm using this system, is the MOOC system of the university. So it, uh, it's the first time, it will be in one shot, so if something weird happened, it's, don't be surprised, it's normal. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I want to uh, give you uh, my presentation and uh, you will be able to see some uh, pictures of Lyon and of my library uh, at the same time. Uh, so let's begin. Uh, as you can see, I have edited a long time for the title of my presentation and didn't manage to make my choice. My main subjects were GDPR, but I have thought that it wasn't attractive enough. Use an acronym in a title is perhaps not the best idea. During my last presentation at the Dublin Coacon, I was speaking about bibliographic standards changes, and I had, I had already used so much acronyms for it, so I think that I have used my acronyms credits for all the Coacon ever. Then I thought that it would be more, more catchy to talk about personal data. That is the real issue that we want to deal with and it may be the subject that interests most of the attendees. And finally, I realized that what I really want to speak about is how, is how the French user group Koala decided to fund this announcement. So, as I can't make my choice between this subject, I'm going to speak a little bit of each one. First of all, I'm going to explain the new rules about personal data protection that were decided within the European Union since 2018. These rules imply specific requirements of what is stored by software and website and how to inform people about it. As in libraries, the main software used is the ILS, it became a challenge to adapt COA as it could handle what we have to do to respect the new rules. Koala, as a French COA non-profit group, was rapidly asked to help COA libraries to deal with the new regulation. To be short, Koala was created in 2007 it asked for a paying membership to organize its activities. In 2019, we had 60 institutional members and 20 individuals. My university is settled in Lyon, in France. We have been using COA for 10 years. There are 30,000 students and staff in Lyon Free University. There are nearly 250,000 biblio records in our COA and 25 branches free for the main libraries. I'm in charge for, of the Lyon Free University Library software since 2011, and I'm the chairwoman of Koala since 2015. Privacy data has become a concern since most people are using internet for commercial, social, and administrative purposes. They are subscribing and storing a lot of personal details on databases and are feeding the big data. Activities and interests are also tracked to be sold for advertising purpose. 
The European laws needed to be updated to face those questions. So the European Union worked on new rules and may, in May 20, uh, 2018, the new European U regulation on personal data protection went into effect. I'm not a law specialist, so I can't explain it sharply, but I can give you the goals that seem the more relevant for the libraries. It's to permit patrons to give or withdraw their consent for data storage and processing, to understand how their data is being used, request for an access, have the right to be forgotten, and be able to export their data in an um, open format. Personal data are data that can permit to identify a person. There are any anonymous data that can be double-checked to identify a specific individual. They can be identification number, social identity, or physical or cult cultural characteristics. In library, it can be account number, student number, addresses, phone number, or sex. Again, I'm not a law specialist, but these new rules entail different focus points if you are managing a website or a software dealing with personal data. These following are not exhaustive, but are thought from my librarian perspective. First, you have to do an introspection work to know which data you stored and why. You have to list all the personal data you register in your library systems and then ask yourself if you really need them. You should store only the smallest necessary personal data you need and no longer than you'd need it. Second, you have to list all the processing activities you are, re you are doing with those data. Do you need it to communicate with your patrons, to inform them of available holds or to send them overdue notices? You surely need data to evaluate your activities. The need of statistics is often a bottomless pit. Pay attention to declare all other companies that could have an access to the personal data, especially if you don't have your own servers and if your COA is hosted. Then you have to inform your patrons. You should ask them their consent to store their data and to deal with it and you have to list what you are doing with. So, you have to create a form to ask the consent of your users, and you have to give them a way to give up their consent at any time. And the last really important point is that you can not keep their data for a long period. You have to clean your database and delete all personal data for people who are not active anymore and as quickly as possible. So, this is the goal you should reach to fit the GDPR compliance. But this is a long way. In my library, for instance, we haven't achieved it yet and it's still a work in progress. Now, let's talk about the interesting things, COA and the COA community. I'm, I hope you're still here and uh, that you didn't give up listening. What is going on on the COA community? I think the first person who began to work on this was Joseph Moravec from Czech Republic. Several IRC meetings were organized, so you can find minutes and log here if you are interested. And after, a special wiki page was created with all the actions to be done and the Buxilla links to see the evolution. Many people were involved. I can't name them all, but at least Joseph, Catherine, Marcel, Michael, Magnus. Just to focus on few but decisive announcements. As I told you, um, GDPR asks for users to be informed and to uh, give their consent for of what will be done with their data. So a consent field has been added in COA with a link with a, a spe special URL where libraries can explain how they will handle the personal data. To activate, it, activate that, uh, we have two system preferences, GDPR policy and GDPR policy URL. Libraries should not keep the personal data longer than needed, so options have been added 
to the cleanup database script to make the erasure of data easier. The users should be able to change their mind, give up their consent and ask their data to be deleted. So this information is now considered into the data deletion script. For this purpose, you can use three different system preferences. Unanscribe reflection delay, pattern anonymized delay, pattern removal delay. If you want to follow all the announcements, see the Omnibus Bugzilla tickets on this subject. All these features are great, but several library, for several libraries, the anonymizing way chosen in COA didn't match their needs. And especially in the French un uh, libraries. The French university libraries have a lot of figures to provide to the French state to justify their activities and their fundings. We have to provide information about our active patrons, in which year are they, which discipline do they learn. Most of the university libraries have an automatic import of all the students and staff from the university. They are all in COA, even if they are not active. Until now, a script was used to anonymize the circulation data, called batch anonymized, but it removes the borrower numbers from the circulation history. So we can't make any reports that group the circulation history by borrower number. And if we can tell the number of loans done by the students in second year of law, for example, we couldn't tell how many active users there are. For all the, these reasons, the anonymizing way used in COA didn't satisfy us. Now let's see how Koala get involved in all that. Obviously, we have organized sessions on this subject during our conferences, but nothing much more at the beginning. Koala is funded by the libraries that were our members, and in 2019, 19, it appeared that we have money left after all our spending. So we decided to fund an announcement in COA. Then we launched a call for proposition to the French libraries. Seven ideas were raised. We asked to add the French providers to evaluate the proposition. Are they doable? Is there already a similar announcement waiting to be integrated? How much time the programming wo work will last and could it be integrated in the COA community version. After that, we asked to our members to vote. At the end, we, as we, you have already guessed, the announcement chosen was about the pseudonymization of members and circulation data in COA. We asked the French provider's solution and estimates. And we have chosen to order this feature to Jonathan Druart, aka Joubu, or Joubou, as Americans say. Um, before the, he began the coding, he sent an email on the COA list to be reassured that what was he was planning to do was okay with the community. After he began to code, and when it was ready, he helped me to install my COA dev box to be able to test. It was very long to achieve that, so a special thanks to him. And then I was testing, I was finding bugs, so he was coding again and I was testing again and so on, several times, but not that much. Finally, these features have been integrated in COA. First, the future that add a pseudonymization process for patterns and transactions. To be GDPR compliant, we, you, ah, we can keep the borrower number for a long time in the COA tables as it is considered to be a personal data. But we need a key to determine a single active borrower to be able to group our reports on it. So the better solution was a pseudonymization because it transforms the borrower number in a cryptic number but that's no more link with the personal data. 
To be sure that this new feature would not disturb the previous way COA works, two different tables were added in the database. Pseudonymized transaction and pseudonymized borrower attributes. You can switch on you can switch on the copy of information in those tables with a preference system called pseudonymization. In the pseudonymized transaction table will be registered information about the patterns and circulation, whatever the circulation is, checkout, check-in, renew, on-site checkout. You can choose which information about the patterns you need to keep and a new preference system called pseudonymization pattern fields and uh, the one about the transaction in the new preference. Pseudonymization transaction fields. A lot of library added important information for them in the pattern attributes. So another table, pseudonymized borrower attributes, is dedicated to store the attributes that are marked as copyable for this purpose. Second, the future that adds the ability to purge pseudonymized data. If, an is, if data in these tables are pseudonymized, we can't keep it all the time, so we need a new script to be able to clean the content of this table. The, the preference systems are too hard to say for a French girl. Uh, <laughs> sorry. So, these new features will be in the next release of COA in the 2011 release. To conclude, I would like to say that there are many actors involved in these futures. First, the French library that made the functional analysis and sent it to COA. Uh, the Rennes 1 University in Brittany. Uh, then our members who vote for it, also the Koala board team who work on the, all the process and tested the futures, Joubu as the Koala programmer, and finally the QA team and the release manager that validated and integrated it in Koala. So, I just want to say that it's not just programming. COA is a huge human team and it is one of its force. As long as we are motivated and that the community is numerous, I'm sure that COA will continue to be greater and greater. Don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions, but for technical questions, perhaps you should ask Joubu. Okay, so uh, it's... Uh, it's all for me. I hope that it was clear. Um, again, I'm really sorry not to be able to be with you because Coacon are really great moments, uh, really interesting, and it's so fine to be able to meet other Coa people. So have fun. Um, thank you to Ode. <laughs> that helps me <laughs> for my MOOC. And uh, goodbye.